chapters 5 through 8 of the Revelation focus on the opening of the seals on the book. The question is raised, who is worthy to open the seals? The answer is the sacrificial lamb that is slain. This is usually interpreted to refer to Jesus as the Lamb of God that was slain for the sins of the world. I believe that this is part of the answer. In keeping with Casey's model of self-analysis, I believe that self-sacrifice is also required. In other words, we are to follow the example of Jesus in this regard in surrendering ourselves and our wills to the will of the divine. Jesus showed us the way and set the example. It is our choice to follow. This is what I was referring to when I interpreted my second dream involving the Leidig Center. I know this is probably somewhat controversial, especially to persons with a fundamental Christian belief system. I understand that approach. I was raised in the Church of God sect of Christianity. Jesus' self-sacrifice is a powerful metaphor. I can only speak from my own experience. When I consciously made choices to set myself aside for the welfare of others, I experienced the opening of the centers and the raising of the divine energy within me. In the yogic traditions, it is called kundalini. Edgar Cayce also used this term. But this energy goes by many names in various cultures, and I think it is the same energy that is felt by Christians who experience the Holy Spirit and have mystical experiences such as speaking in tongues and the power to heal. After years of meditating, I first experienced the opening of the centers and the raising of the Kundalini energy after I made a conscious choice to devote more of my time and energy to my daughter, who was about five years old at the time. She was starting to exhibit some acting out behaviors that were not typical for her. My initial reaction was to discipline her. Then the still small voice within stopped me in my tracks. I became aware that she was acting out to get attention from dad, who was too busy for her. I was in graduate school and operating a construction business. When I made a conscious choice to spend quality time with her doing what she wanted to do, that was when I experienced the awakening of the kundalini energy. Over the years I have noticed this pattern of conscious self-sacrifice and the awakening of the divine energy within me. So in this regard, as in many others that I will share, the revelation has become personal to me. It speaks to me in the midst of life. The actual opening of the centers and raising of the kundalini energy was a profoundly powerful sensory experience. On this eventful occasion, I had done a 2 o'clock a.m. meditation, a practice that I did whenever possible. I felt a stirring in my lower back. The kundalini started at the base of the spine and moved upward slowly. I could hear a crackling sound like static electricity that became increasingly louder until it was thunderous. In some ways, it was similar to the launching of a rocket that slowly rumbles as it picks up speed when leaving the launch pad. As the kundalini inched up the spine, gaining momentum, I realized that I was not in control of the experience. I felt fear and apprehension, but also wonderment and excitement, realizing that I was experiencing what I had read about in the mystical literature. I also knew that it could turn out badly. I had read some of the stories about Kundalini crisis. As the energy burst into my head, there was a tremendous burst of light. So when I read about John's experiences as his centers were opened, I can identify with the powerful sensory phenomena and emotions that he represented with dramatic symbols in the Revelation. As I have worked with the Revelation and the self-analysis process, I have become aware of the information that has been sealed into each of my spiritual centers that are encoded in the glands and nerves of my physical body. This is the self-analysis process that I conveyed in the previous section. In keeping with Casey's model of individual interpretation and application, I want to be clear that the rather dramatic experiences that I had with the opening of the centers and the raising of the Kundalini energy 
is personal to me. Others may have a less dramatic awakening that is unique for each individual. In John's experience of the opening of the seals, as the first four seals are opened, horsemen come galloping out of the book. These are the infamous four horsemen of the apocalypse that have been depicted by artists throughout the centuries. As each horseman rides forth, one of the four beasts tell John to come and see. Edgar Cayce informs us that horses are the archetypal symbols for messengers. The horsemen are message bearers. They are telling us about the sealed or hidden information related to the soul patterns of the four lower centers, represented by the four beasts. Just as the four beasts symbolize the four destructive influences associated with the carnal forces of the body, the four horsemen depict the fruition of those carnal desires in the form of death and destruction. As the fifth seal is open, John sees the souls of those who were slain for the word of God. Again we see the sacrificial motif. Self-sacrifice is a matter of conscious choice the use of the will, which is the hallmark of the fifth center. The opening of the sixth seal was accompanied by a great earthquake, the blackening of the sun, the moon becoming blood red and the stars falling from the sky. This wrathful upheaval is symbolic of the giving away of the ego and the abolishment of selfishness. Then John saw four angels at the four corners of the earth holding back the four winds of the earth. Another angel from the east appears with the seal of God. This angel seals the foreheads of 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel. Then a multitude that had withstood great tribulation and was purified stood before the throne in white robes. The four angels symbolize the body forces associated with heredity and environment, not only of the physical or earthly body, but also of the mental and spiritual bodies. The sealing of the foreheads of the 144,000 of the 12 tribes of Israel represents the potential for spiritualization of the cellular structure of the 12 major divisions of the body. The multitude represents the rest of the body that will eventually be spiritualized in the process of enlightenment. We will be coming back to this theme of spiritualization of the body's cellular structure in a later section when we discuss enlightenment. The opening of the seventh seal was followed by 30 minutes of peace, signifying the power of the seventh center, the pituitary gland to bring calm and resolution to the other centers. For a more contemporary visual representation of the opening of the centers, I recommend the movie Little Buddha. I refer to that section of the movie where the young Buddha is sitting under the great tree and experiences successive waves of illusion as symbolized by tempting women, wars, upheavals, and so forth. This is probably Hollywood's best attempt at depicting the opening of the spiritual centers and the unleashing of the emotional patterns that are sealed in the book of our unconscious, as represented by the seven centers of the body.